Earlier this afternoon, uh, Purdue Athletics announced a change in its football coaching leadership. And at this point, I will turn it over to University Vice President and Athletics Director Mike Babinski. Mike. Thank you, Tom. Uh, thanks for being here today. Obviously, a tough day uh, around uh, Purdue Athletics. Uh, not the Sunday that any of us had anticipated, for sure. And I know it's been uh, been difficult for, lo for lots of folks. Uh, before, as I, as I get started here, uh, I want to first say a, a sincere thank you to uh, to Daryl Hazel. Uh, I've, obviously, I've, we've only worked together for for a short time, um, but but my experience with him, uh, and I know everybody's experience with him during his tenure at Purdue has been nothing but but first class. Now that that's who he is as a gentleman. He's a quality quality individual, uh, and, and this is not a place that I had, that I would ever have hoped we had gotten to. Uh, but here we are. Uh, you know, it, it's not for lack of effort, not for lack of want to on his part. Uh, and I want to make sure that uh, we, we give that the appropriate respect that it, that, it, uh, that it deserves. Unfortunately, the program just wasn't able to gain the traction uh, that, that, that I believe it can uh, and, and, and should at this point in time. Uh, so, so we made the decision, or I made the decision to, uh, to make the change. After consulting with President Daniels and uh, Board Chairman Mike, Mike Berghoff, uh, we decided to, to make this change. Uh, I'll introduce Coach Parker in a little bit, but I'm very grateful and, and thankful to uh, to Jared Parker for being willing to accept the role as, as interim head coach, and I'm confident that he's going to do a great job. My focus and our focus as we move forward uh, and, and our priority is, is on our current team. You know, we've got a group of young men in that locker room that deserve nothing but our very best effort. We've got six games. We've got half a season left to, left to play. This is not just a, hey, let's get through Saturday and, and, and move on. We've got a lot of football left to play. There's lots to play for. Uh, and, I, and I told our young men, and, and, and Coach Parker reinforced that to them, that, hey, they are our priority right now. We, we, we have a responsibility to them to get them prepared and get them ready to play. And they certainly have ongoing responsibilities as members of our, of our football program. I understand that uh, there'll be lots of preoccupation about what's next, uh, and, and I, I appreciate that. But, but in, at this moment in time, uh, it, the priority for us, uh, for, for Jared and I, is, is on our current team and, and getting ourselves ready to play, first and foremost, uh, Saturday at Nebraska. And uh, with that, I'll take, we'll, we'll, both of us will take any questions that, uh, that you all might have. Yeah, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. Mike, why did this decision have to come now? at the middle of this season? Well, uh, Nathan, I, I don't like doing it in the middle of the season. If this is not uh, the way I would have uh, preferred to do to do things. Uh, but I, I felt like we were, we had found ourselves as a program and as a team stuck sort of in a this seesaw of playing playing reasonably well and then falling backwards. And uh, a pattern that, that, that just didn't seem to have an end to it at this point. And, and for me, it was about finding a way, or, or, or in my mind, finding a way to allow our team to have the very best chance for success. Our, our upper class in particular, our seniors, uh, they, des they deserve the opportunity to make something of this year and to be part of the, the, the return to success of Purdue football. And, and I'm hopeful that we can, we can make that happen. Uh, I, I didn't, I just, in my heart, I just didn't see that happening uh, as we were currently headed uh, without, without making a change. Stacy, Mike, was this evaluation based on this season or do you look you know, over the last three years and this season? Well, obviously, I'm, I wasn't here for the last three seasons, but I'm well aware of, of, of the records and, 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 and what was, uh, and, and had, I've had multiple conversations with folks that were part of the, the last several seasons, so I have some perspective. I don't have any per first-hand knowledge, so that was all uh, something that I, I didn't want to rely too heavily on, but it's, but it's all in the record. It's all, it's all fact. Uh, this year, for me, it was watching, watching the environment, watching the... Uh, the approach to, to, to how we uh, handled ourselves uh, pre and post game, and, uh, and ultimately my my determination that uh, we needed to do, to do it a different way in order to allow ourselves the best chance for success. Kyle, Jared, what are the challenges in, in taking over in this type of scenario? Well, it's um, starting to feel those right now. You know, as this all happened pretty fast, but I think the uh, first challenge is you got a bunch of men in the room that you've coached with that are hurting because of what's happened because everybody's affected by it. So a bunch of, um, of men that I still share the office with and families. So that's a challenge and will continue to be a challenge. Uh, then the young men that are, that are on our football team that are wondering who the next head coach will be, how's this going to change all the things for us, recruiting, all those things, uh, start to enter your mind about the challenges you're going to have in that, in that regard. And then the third thing is, is I have an obligation to Mike and Purdue University and those guys 
in that locker room and our coaching staff to make sure that um, we, get, we put our best foot forward in the last six games to do something that our seniors and the guys are going to leave this program feel proud of. Let me follow up real quickly on, on that. I, and, I, and I neglected to mention that. I, I had a chance to meet with the staff uh, earlier today also after after meet with Coach Hazel and, uh, and and delivered the same message to them and, and, and Jared just referred to it. I mean, this is obviously a, a, a difficult day for them. I mean, it's it, it, it casts their future into, into some degree of uncertainty, but we've got a lot of of pros in, in that room. A lot, a lot of guys that have been in this business for a long time. They know what they're doing. Uh, they know how to coach. They know they know the world. They know the world. And uh, and, and I fully expect that, that our players and, and Purdue will get their very best uh, in, in the weeks ahead. I, I have no doubt about that. And I got no signal otherwise from them in there. So they, they handle themselves uh, extremely well. Mike. Uh, Coach Parker, um, have you spoken with the team yet and notified them about this, and what was their reaction? Yeah, we, um, you know, Mike um, wanted us to have a staff meeting and a, and a team meeting, so we did both of those, a team meeting. We had a team meeting earlier this afternoon, and um, Mike got a chance to address them and kind of tell them the news of what's going on, how we're moving forward, and then I took some time to do the same. What was the message? Um, you know, pretty, uh, like I said, it's all happened pretty fast. Uh, but the things I just want to ensure to him is, one, you know, we, we pass on a message. Coach Hazel wanted to get to him of how much he cared for him, how much he appreciated him. And uh, I would be remiss in not saying how much I appreciate Coach Hazel and Morgan and Mike now that uh, what he's done for, for my family and, and the, what kind of future that we've, we've been able to have here at Purdue. Um, but moving forward, we, you know, I did let him know that for where we are and what has happened, um, we can't sit there and do what we've been doing the same way and all those things. Um, we're going to be very respectful, and it's a way I told them. I was very honest with them. That's pretty much how I deliver everything anyway, and just told them this is an awkward situation. You know, it's it's a little bit different. It's not a it's not a status quo type situation. They know that. I was honest with them about that, but I told them we're going to move forward and do things a little bit different, change up some things, how we do it, and try to spark some um, some different feelings for for our kids and what they're going to do. And and I know the staffs all we're all going. This is all going to be done together. Stacy. Mike, when you spoke with Daryl, just obviously, like you said, a difficult yeah. conversation. What yeah. was his response? You know, he was the gentleman and, and the professional that you, that we've all would expect him to be. Uh, he uh, obviously he was disappointed. He felt badly, uh, but he understood it was part of it. And uh, I, honestly, I, I could not have asked for. I, I've, un, I've been in any number of those conversations during the course of my career, and and no one has ever handled it better. I, I can assure you of that. He was he was the the pro and the, and, the, and the, again, as I said, the true gentleman that he really is. Jerry, just what in your experience, prior experience, prepares you for something like this? What do you sort of lean back on, or, or who do you lean on, and you know, with this undertaking? Well, the first one we'll lean on will will be Mike. You know, he's going to be right beside him and help me through the stuff that he's seen. And then the biggest the biggest one in my mind is going to be our current staff. We've got a bunch of good coaches on our staff, a bunch of guys have been through the business, been through this this stuff before, a lot of great ideas. Um, so that'll be the first thing to be able to lean on the, the group of guys that are right there that we already know and trust and love and care about. And then, um, then I'll also pull, uh, as, as odd as it is, at the same time, you have to be totally honest with myself. I've also had a dream of doing this, and you never know with what life gives you if you ever get a chance to do it again. So for six weeks, all the stuff I've dreamed of and um, all the stuff that's been instilled for me from playing sports my entire career and how I was raised and all those things are going to fire to what we'll choose to do over the next six weeks to try to give these guys something they're proud of. This isn't about me um, and my career. Um, this is about those guys in that locker room and the guys that are that on our staff that are all hurting, and we're going to try to make uh, find a way for them to be proud of something over the next six weeks. Jeff. Jared, um, I think one of the maddening thing, I, things, I guess, for fans, for, even for you guys, and that's why I want to ask you the question, you never were able to follow up a victory with another victory. And in those nine losses, after a victory, the average margin's 21 points a game. You've been around it. You've seen it. Have you guys been able to wrap your hands around how and why does that happen? Sure. I mean, it's a good question, and it's um, a pretty glaring stat. Um, obviously, before this time, we certainly haven't been able to get our hands around it because it's happened. So uh, moving forward, you know, for us to get where we want to go, we, you have to do things in order to prevent it. But... Your question to ask, that's a tough one to answer. And, and obviously, we didn't get our hands around it because it happened, you know? So um, the, the whole goal will be for it not to happen anymore, you know? Brian? Mike, when it comes time to go find your next coach, yeah. why is Purdue a good job when you go out and, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to communicate that to people? Certainly. Uh, well, I would tell you that, again, I've only been here a short while, but uh, one, one of the 
the first and foremost things that I've tried to do is is to, to get an understanding of, of what we've got in place, what the possibilities are here, what the what the future might be from a, from a football perspective and a total athletic perspective. We're talking about football today. Uh, I, I think we've got lots to offer. I mean, we, we, we've, we've got many, many things in place here that, that are incredibly positive. First of all, we start with a, an unbelievable university, uh, tremendous academic opportunity for young people, tremendous family atmosphere, great community to, to be in, a great conference to compete in. There, there's lots of things that, that, are, that are here and, and, and already in place. Obviously, what's coming, we've got the football performance complex that's well underway. We've got plans to do other things at Ross State Stadium that are exciting. Uh, and we've got a commitment from the president, from the board of trustees, uh, to build a championship program. This is not just about changing one person out and saying all, all is well. It, it's about building an organization that's capable of competing at a championship level. And that's, that's what we're ultimately going to try to do. Uh, but I, th I think we've got all the pieces in place. Uh, we will have all the pieces in place, and we've got, a, we've got the commitment necessary to make that happen. So I'm, I have great confidence that we'll be able to present that to, to the right people and, and, and ultimately find the right person. But, again, that'll, that'll be for another day. Nathan? Jared, what has to change in terms of identifying better talent and bringing that better talent to West Lafayette more consistently relative to the rest of the Big Ten? Sure. Um, you know, again, all, all tough questions in a tough day because uh, I am very thankful for what Coach Hazel did for my family and for this program. But uh, moving forward, you, you do. I mean, it's uh, my jobs and everything. You get a chance to lead up to this point and being in recruiting, you. this is a personnel-driven game, uh, both as a staff and as players. And there is no uh, secret um, to the better players you have, uh, usually the better you are. And if they're motivated and you do things the right way, it gets special. So um, that is... The, for right now and for moving forward, whatever that, that comes up and Mike fills the position, all those things, the number one priority is is filling your roster with the right men of character, but also um, uh, guys that are gifted that can win games in the Big Ten. Stacy? Not sure who's best to ask this, but are any other changes on the staff? Uh, not at this point. We, we haven't, I don't anticipate anything. Uh, Jared will, and I will talk about that, uh, but, but we, don't, we don't anticipate anybody exiting. We might make, reshuffle some things, but that's, that'll be conversations we'll have in, in the next 24 hours. Mike, in one of your first press conferences, you said that Purdue's done a lot of good things, but no real program-defining, kind of game-changing no. things. Yes. Now you kind of have an opportunity to do that with the coach that you hire next. Mm -hmm. How do you plan on doing that? Well, that's... Uh, it's a, it's a great question. It takes it takes hard work. It takes focus. It takes a, it takes having a strategy and and then executing that. Uh, the the reality is we, we've got time for that to happen. Uh, we're as I said earlier, my focus right now is is on our current team and, and doing the right thing by them. I mean that's they're that we have a football team. We have guys that have committed to us and we're committed to them. And I and I want to make sure that I don't distract from that at this point. Uh, but but we'll 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 work as as hard and as necessary. Uh, all the attention that, that that search deserves, it will get. And there's nothing more important than having the right people. As, as as Jared said, this is a personnel driven business. You know, buildings, facilities are important. They're great, but if you don't have the right people, uh, you you don't get where you need to go. And, and that will be uh, the absolute first priority for me as we move for, as as we get past getting our team acclimated and and, and situated here to to move forward under Coach Parker's leadership. Well. Jared, did you have any idea it was going to be you? And, and what was your reaction when you were approached? And, uh, I guess the, the, the next thing, too, is you have a game in six days. So uh, what are sort of the, the first priorities to get ready for that? Right. Yeah, no, um, I had no idea. Um, and certainly don't you don't let your mind, you know, you're not as, a, as doing things on the right staff. It's a line. You don't let your mind ever even think about that or hope for that or anything. You uh, go about your business, make sure. The wide receivers do their job in, in helping us win games and go forward. So nothing there at all. And, yeah, six days from now we got to go. And um, we, actually, well, yeah, six days we'll get on a plane and fly to Nebraska and uh, go play a great football team. So um, I'll spend the rest of the night and all the night and tomorrow morning to try to do everything in my power to do a, a job for, for the men in the room, both coaches and players, and make sure we're ready to go and, and put something out there we're proud of. What, what was your reaction? Um, just... Uh, at first, shock and sadness for, for the situation for Coach Hayes and where we're at and for everybody on the staff, no question, you know, and that's not um, just me saying it. It sure is, you know, and, and for my family, you know. Um, but at the same time, um, my reaction's been to what, uh, how I've raised and where, what's got me to this point, and that's to be um, accepted as another challenge, accepted with a chip on my shoulder, and uh, a personal obligation to all the coaches, their wives and families, and to the players 
to do everything in my power to help them finish out six weeks. And again, not to repeat myself, but have something they'll be proud of when they leave here. So that's that's a challenge. I'm, and that's all. That's the only way you can approach it. Jared, what uh, do you look at your situation with the recruiting? And you obviously have some commitments and others that you need to follow up with. What will be your plan here in the near term? Um, I'll get on the phone and call every one of them tomorrow. Uh, we got a lot to do tonight, uh, just with all the other stuff. But uh, Alan, we'll talk. I'll talk to every one of our committed guys tomorrow. Um, on the on the phone and kind of let them know where we're at and what's going on. Uh, me and Mike have talked about how we'll move forward in recruiting and all those things. We'll still have a recruiting effort and base with also respect, though, to how things will be changing at some point at the end of the year. So we'll address that as far as future offers and all those things as they come. But for the most part, you want to take care of the guys that are committed and uh, get a chance to get on the phone with them, let them know where we're at and uh, how confident I am in Mike and, and what's going on, and we'll we'll see where the cards play. Dave? You know, when you were when you were hired uh, earlier this semester, um, the president here has been very adamant about about a uh, not running up salaries and uh, getting into uh, uh, big athletic wars and being able to compete against Ohio State. Will that factor into who you can get as a coach and and how much you can spend? You know, I I, I don't believe it will at all, uh, and that doesn't mean we're going to do things that are illogical or uh, outrageous. But on the other hand. Uh, we had multiple conversa conversations, uh, the president and I, along with uh, with Mike Berghoff, the chairman of the board, uh, about our ability to be fully committed in the event that we we got to this point. And uh, I, I had I've received assurance from day one uh, that we will be in a position to, to to do whatever we need to do to build the organization that we need that's capable of competing for a championship. And so I'm I'm fully confident. I don't feel in any way that we'll be hamstrung, and I'm excited about the possibility. Again, that's. It's, this is not the day to, to, to feel that way. It's a, it's a tough day all the way around, but but I I know uh, that there won't be uh, there will be no limitations uh, other than doing being smart uh, as as we as we go forward with this. Jeff, yes, Coach Parker. Um, following up on the recruiting thing, um, you know you guys got some very good football players, but in watching your team, other teams, Maryland, Iowa, um, does the quick moving forward. Does the speed element have to improve? You've got to get some faster players, I would think. That would be a priority. Sure, and it's that's you know what you're always going to want to get. Those guys know it. You're in. A, this is a highly competitive market you're in. Uh, all our current players know that. You know what? The the biggest thing we got to do is make sure we get to our current players and get them guys playing at a high level. You know, and that happens with confidence and all those things. You look at an Iowa team yesterday, and those guys are gifted. They've got some good football players and did a heck of a job. But, you know, those guys are, you could turn on the film from the last 10 years of Iowa and they look similar. They're just, uh, the name changes, you know. They know who they are. You, you have to know who you are. And we're proud of our guys. Our guys work their tails off. And you always want to continue to get better players and build your roster. I tell the wideouts all the time, I'm going to try to over-recruit you. I'm trying to make sure that you don't, you're not a starter next year. And if I do that, that means we're making you better because it's a competitive environment and you're in a position where you want to be in that, in, in that environment. So, um, but I don't want to... Uh, misuse my words and say that we're not we're proud of the guys that are in the locker room um but heck yeah moving forward and, and as you go to to continue to build your roster to get to compete for championships like mike's saying you have to always look to find ways of getting faster getting longer and in the right positions and and, and being <coughs> powerful where you need to be powerful you know brian mike would you expect to hire a search firm to start things for you while here in town you're focused on the here and now you know what, Brian? I have, I have thought about it, but I haven't gotten to a, a decision point on that. That'll happen again in the in the days ahead. But uh, there's been nothing done in that front at all. I I didn't anticipate being here today, and this this is just, I mean, I I've been evaluating, I've been thinking about it. Uh, this is again, as I said, this was not the Sunday that we had we had planned to have today. But but here we sit, and now what will happen next will happen in due time. But uh, we're we're not there yet. Kyle, Mike, what were some of the attributes of Jared that? made him your choice uh, you probably had a few that, that you considered i would imagine absolutely well you know as, as i looked around our staff there were any number of of, uh, of coaches that that i think could have filled this role but as i've watched practice i've watched games uh i, I thought jared really uh, handles himself extremely well he's he has the respect of the players they respond to him in a really favorable way obviously he's been to other places but he's been here for four years also so he understands our program he understands what has and hasn't happened uh in order in an appropriate way so i think he brings a, a really strong perspective uh he's going as as you've heard today he's going to be very respectful to uh 
to Coach Hazel and what's gotten done, but he's got his own thoughts and his own ideas. And uh, again, I just I just really thought like he he had the makings of someone that could uh, could provide this sort of shift in, in tone and direction that that we need at this point in time. And and I would tell you this that everything I've seen so far today since I shook up his world earlier this morning. <laughs> uh, has, has not, done nothing but reinforce that. He's handled himself extremely well in a very difficult circumstance. A couple more, Nathan. Jared, are you still coaching wide receivers too? Yes, sir. Yep, I'll love, uh, you know, and again, there's a lot of stuff we got to go through tonight and tomorrow, but I'll coach them. Uh, some of that stuff's going to have to change as far as how we do things on game day and those things, so we'll have, we'll have we got some stuff to get through. And, Mike, you, yeah. s you said this wasn't the Sunday we were anticipating was this, was this not on the radar at all going into yesterday, or how much, I guess, was it on the radar? Was there something about the way yesterday's game unfolded that you felt this needed to happen now? Well, my, my hope for yesterday uh, was that we would build on the dramatic win from last, last Saturday and, and come out and really show progress and show a sense of, of, of direction and momentum. Uh, and when that didn't happen, uh, well, certainly I've been thinking about this uh, at, at the highest level from from day one. That's there's, there's no secret about that. This is a this was a decision year or sort of a, a pivotal year for our football program. We all we all knew that going into the year, and I knew that when I arrived here. Uh, but but honestly, as as the game unfolded, particularly the first half yesterday, where we just weren't weren't as competitive, weren't weren't making that show, sign of, of, of progress. Uh, it, it just really. Uh, Got me to the point where you know I, th I think we're just we're, we're stuck in a, in a place that we need to we need to do something to change change the dynamic and uh, and, and so we had had the appropriate conversations uh, following that and 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 on we went and, and here we are now. Anything else? Okay, thank you all very much.